Garen, some mm. of the comments that uh, Alistair made about not, you know, almost all the, the problems that he faced and uh, were b b due to lack of support. I mean, do mm. you agree with those? And and now these reports about how much it actually cost um, Saru yeah. to, well, how much the severance package cost something in the in the region of 1.8 million yeah. rand. How much truth is there to that? Uh, well, yeah, starting with the complaints that Alistair had, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to believe that your employee would sort of give up on you, you know, within um, 24 months of appointing you. Mind, having said that, though, Peter de Villiers has come out subsequently and sort of had the same gripe with SA Rugby. So maybe there is some truth to it. Maybe he didn't receive the sort of support that he would like ideally, but it's not to say that there was no support at all for him. But it is very difficult after one year when your record win percentage was around the 33 mark, the worst year in South African rugby ever. Um, you know, there, I think there were reports of them looking to get rid of him after one year. It turned out it would cost him a hell of a lot of money to do so. so they mm -hmm. stuck it out for a second year. There were some performance clauses inserted, and then they got rid of him halfway through his contract, 25 tests. You know, it's probably the best time to get rid of someone, not in a World Cup year. If they'd stuck it out for another year, we would have been only like a matter of months away from the World Cup. So now at least it gives Rassi Rasmus two full years almost, or two seasons, to sort of um, improve on, on, on what mm. Alistair's left and you know, hopefully be ready for the, for the World Cup. So yeah, so that's probably a good time for him to go. In terms of what they actually had to pay out, um, I believe reports suggest that he was on a 3.6 million rand contract per year. Therefore, they paid him out six months worth of, in a mm. severance package, which amounts to the 1.8 that mm. you mentioned. So in total, they paid out 9 million rand for the two years plus the six <coughs> months. I did some sums, it works out to be, I think 360,000 rand per test. And of the 11 wins, it works out to be about 820,000. So not bad for <laughs> each of those um, 11 wins that he had in the end. It, it is a lo lot of money, but that's, uh, having said that, I'm guessing Rusty is probably on the same sort of package. Mm. So, you know, there's it's, it's no difference there. It would be very expensive for SA Rugby had they appointed a coach and a director of rugby. Mm. Bearing in mind that they paid Rusty plus a few of his fellow Munster um, um, defence coaches that he's brought back as well. You know, they er were earning good money over there. When that equates to SA Rands, it's a lot of money as well. So, es you know, SA Rugby's um, wage bill is, is, fa is fairly high, I would imagine. So maybe that's another reason they didn't want to have a coach as well as a director of rugby. So mm. we've got Rusty for the foreseeable future. I can't see anything changing, you know, in that respect mm. until at least after the 2019 World Cup. After that, whether Rusty feels like he really wants to be a director of rugby and a little bit more hands off, and then appoint a coach. And there's been talk about Dion Davids and players and coaches mm -hmm. like that perhaps coming in. So, you know, that remains to be seen. But obviously, his first assignment is this massive England three test series yeah. in June. You know, that's a really, really daunting way to start the season um, as your, you know, your first assignment as coach. Alistair had Ireland and, and the worst French side, I think, ever to arrive in South Africa. Whereas rusty has got, you know, an Eddie Jones coached England side. England don't have a great record in South Africa, but then having said that, they've never had Eddie Jones coach them yeah. in South Africa. So, you know, it might be the end of this season. England have got fantastic depth. And I think, you know, it will be a really daunting um, series for the South Africa. And, and, and I think what a lot of people are forgetting is that <coughs> rusty has got the same players to pick that Alistair had to pick. I'd like to still see how many changes he makes. Yeah. Now, the same person now, he's not going to find... Um, seven backline players that are world beaters overnight. You know, if he picks different players, all that's going to mean is that these are more mm. inexperienced players because they're going to come in for their first, second, or third tests. Yeah. And we've seen that they're different not backroom staff, though. So. Yeah, yeah, the the defence. But the, you know, having said that, you know, Brendan Fenter was part of it. And everyone raves about Brendan yeah. Fenter's been like this mercurial sort of um, defence and backline and exits coach. But he's apparently no longer there. So do we get stronger <coughs> by having stick um, back? I'm not too sure. You know, so Russ is really going to have his mm. hands cut out, and I think Eddie Jones, you know, he's already been on a scouting trip to South Africa. You know, he's ahead of the game, yeah, and I think it's going to be a really, really tough mm. series. I mean, there's nothing to suggest we're going to win that series at all.